Can you have some more examples of maybe even, hey, research-based, sort of a, a big bang for the buck in terms of good stuff that do good things to us biochemically? Well, I mean, in many ways, we get to sort of a second set of skills, which you've mentioned, they've talked to several of your guests before, but it's the idea of charging up, eating, sleeping, and exercise. Our bodies are like the batteries of our car. We actually have to spend energy to get energy. And the problem is when we're feeling really anxious, people get stuck, right? They don't feel like they're doing something, so they don't exercise. They forget to eat or overeat. And we know that those three things not only help your physical body, it actually decreases depression, decrease anxiety, and increase well-being. So charging up is extremely important. And I think not optional. It's one of the few things we actually have some control for the lucky ones to be able to do. Okay. Well, so then let's go there for a bit. So charging up, exercise, good nutrition. Are there any particular high leverage areas here? I'd love it if you could put a little oomph to it in terms of, oh, this particular nutrient makes a world of a difference. Or, hey, this study showed that, boy, a little bit of sleep deprivation is actually devastatingly harmful. Well, sleep deprivation not only decreases your immune system, but also creates memory deficits. So that for sure, we know it's a problem. But when it comes to sleep hygiene, broadly speaking, one of the things that most people completely violates in the sleep hygiene is that their bed should be used for sleep. That's it. You should never watch TV in your bed. You should really make sure that when you transition to bed, you're really actually trying to slow down your brain. And that's one that most people don't do. Well, tell us anything else that uh, you recommend we do or not do. I guess I recommend that we really hyper-focus on the value of social support, of staying connected. It's the only buffer that we really know against mental illness. And so no matter what it is, even having this conversation, right, staying connected in one way or another can really help us decrease the chances of developing emotional difficulties 